So in this part of the notes, we're going to be using the same company's unadjusted trial balance and taking it forward with adjusting entries. This will be very uh, prime in terms of laying out how you're going to want to work your way forward in the practice problem. Um, so it, you know, a header just to orient ourselves. Always very important to pay attention to details in accounting not just jumping into a problem with assumptions. Uh, but it says for each of the following examples, what type of journal entry is being made, accrual or deferral, and what is the entry that must be made if Bevo's fiscal year end is 1231X0. So this was the unadjusted balance, uh, trial balance at that date, which means that um, we have some additional information that needs to be recorded, right? We have some non-cash revenues and expenses that came from activities during the period related to some of these accounts that need to be adjusted. The first one says, Bevo's insurance policy was originally purchased to carry a period of three years on January 1st, X0 for 40,000. So that kind of tells us the story, tells us the story happened in the insurance contract. The original entry, not the adjusting entry, the original entry would have looked like this. Debit to prepaid insurance and a credit to cash. So we know this is not the adjusting entry. Why? Most simply because we have one of the rule violations here for adjusting entries. We have cash going out. And of course, this also happened on 11X0. So that is not the end of a reporting period. Um, and that's when we want to make adjusting entries happen. So if we bought this at the beginning of the year and it's supposed to cover three years, right? So three years and it starts at the beginning of this year, we're not going to want to expense the full 30,000 by the matching principle. We want to recognize expenses as they give rise to revenue. So if this contract is covering us for three years of operations, it'll help us generate revenues for those three years. So in order to calculate that, we would take the entire contract and then split it up over three years to derive the amount that we want to recognize per year. So for the year X zero, we want to recognize $10,000. Now this entry would happen on 1231 of X zero, and we would have a debit to the expense because we're recognizing an expense by the matching principle. We used up that contract for a year. I'm gonna start truncating just so I don't have to write the whole thing out. And then we have the using up of this asset. This asset had prepaid, insur prepaid insurance. Other things you might want to add to this besides the amount that was recorded is to make sure that you are uh, well aware of how these affect net income assets and liabilities. Insurance expense reduces my net income. Prepaid insurance reduces my assets, right? Over here, we can go ahead and do that as well. I didn't. Prepaid insurance increased assets and cash decreased assets. Um, always be mindful of that. Make sure that you're recognizing what is affected by the debit and the credit. Now, what is the classification? Remember, we ask ourselves, did the, did the recognition of an expense or revenue happen first or did the payment of cash happen first? In this case, the payment of cash happened first on 11X0, we paid cash. Down the line, we're recognizing an expense. So this is classified as a deferral. And deferral, just so you know, you should know how to spell common uh, words in your profession or your business dealings, deferral is two R's, one F. Always see this as an issue. Defer roll. So there's two R's, only one F. Um, the other thing I want to invite us to do here is a little bit of prep work for the unadjusted trial, uh, for the adjusted trial balance. We're going to look at what happened here with the prepaid rent contract, uh, sorry, prepaid insurance contract because it is something that 
had an initial entry and then we credited in a subsequent entry, subsequent entry so created when it was paid for, we had a debit of 30,000 go into it. And then as we made our adjusting entry, we reduced it by 10,000. So the new amount at the end of the year after our adjusting entries are made would be 20,000. This would go, this would go in my adjusted trials as the new balance for our prepaid insurance contract. Um, we also created insurance expense where there was none before. It's slightly less interesting to track as, in a, as a T account, but why not as we're getting used to these? Um, it, there was no insurance expense. If we look at our accounts, um, there is none. So we only have rent expense and salary expense recorded so far prior to adjusting entries. It's a nominal account. Remember, it's a income statement account. So we debit it by 10,000 and here we go. That is also going to go on the adjusted trial balance. Let's look at the next one. We got Bevo owing its employees an additional 5,000 for the last two weeks of December that they will pay on January 3rd. So uh, they haven't been paid for the last two weeks. They earned $5,000 of salary. Um, we're not gonna pay them during this fiscal year. We're gonna pay them in the next fiscal year, but by the matching principle, they worked for us, right? It's employees owed its employees an additional 5,000 for the last two weeks of December. So our employees did services for us, provided uh, help to generate our revenues. Therefore, we should match the cost of their help to the current period, even though they're not going to be paid to January 3rd. Apply that matching principle correctly. Um, now, I noted there was some salary expense, right? There is $50,000 of salaries expense already recorded. Um, and it says the $50,000 of salary expense in the unadjusted trial, unadjusted trial balance represents salaries already paid. So what that means is sometime during the year, we, we give them credited cash, cash and we expense. So that shows you, hey, you know, some of these expenses and revenues are recorded during the year through the, trans through the transaction that made sense to record them in step one but not everything was. For example, this one would not be recorded because no cash is being exchanged until the next year. So this one's actually kind of simple. No calculations are involved. All we have to do is note the timing of the adjusting entry that we're making, December 31st, X0. Now, we have wage expense that we have to recognize by the matching principle. And that's $5,000. And then we have wages payable. For also $5,000. Um, also note what this does to our elements. We have wage expense decreasing net income. We have wages payable increasing liabilities. Now we have to ask ourselves again, are we recognizing an expense prior to paying cash? Yeah, we are, right? We're recognizing this at 1231X0. We're not gonna pay till January 3rd of the next year, 13X1. So this is a type of accrual. Um, we will now do some adjustments on the T accounts. First, let's see if we have any wages payable. We don't have any uh, wages payable. That represents a liability. It would come up somewhere in here because the trial balance is listed, you know, categorized by assets, liabilities, equity, and nominal counts. So that one is a new one that we'll add. Wages payable. It starts at zero dollars, dollars, and we get five thousand. So that will create a five thousand, a five thousand dollar our adjusted trial balance. Now, now we spend, we have some action for the adjusted entries took place. 
with our wages payable, we had, I'm sorry, wage expense, wage expense, salary expense. I call it wages and salary are, are, are interchangeable for the most part. Um, you know, we could pick it apart and say wages are paid hourly, salaries are paid annually, but yeah, the, it, the, it, it doesn't really matter in this uh, circumstance. $50,000 is where we started. Or we didn't start there, but it was created during the period when we were paying our employees those salaries or wages. And now we're going to add another 5000 So overall, then, that salary or wage expense will be 55000 on the adjusted trial balance. But no need to create a new category because it was present at some point during the year. Uh, let's go to the next one on, uh, let's see, Bevo was paid $100,000 on October 1st, 20X0 for a job it intends to complete evenly over the course of the next year. Revenue is to be recognized evenly over this time. So on October 1st, let's, let's go ahead and go back to making that original entry here, uh, 101X0. We were paid cash because someone is paying us to perform services over the course of a year. And they gave us $100,000 of cash, a nice uh, lining for our pocketbook. And we're going to complete it over the course of a year. So we haven't done it yet, but this now presents an obligation to my company. I have to render render services to $100,000 of that cash that they already gave. They already gave generously. And this then becomes, remember, not a revenue, even though it says revenue, it's not a revenue. It doesn't increase income, not income, not yet. It's an obligation to perform services in the future. And we also have an increase to our assets because they gave us some cash. Now, they did this on October 1st, and it says that we intend to complete this job evenly over the course of the next year. Um, so what makes sense, perhaps, is if we're going to discharge this evenly is to just recognize the portion of revenue that corresponds to three months. Well, how long is that contract? It's a one year contract. So we have three, we want to recognize three of those months because we got paid in October, October, November, December. Count on your fingers sometimes. It'll help you um, because people get a little bit confused if I'll say like September 30th and then they'll count the whole month of September and say, oh, well, there's four months. But no, there wasn't. You got paid at the end of September. So you really still only have October, November, December. Anyway, better to count on your fingers and feel silly than to make a silly mistake and get some points knocked off. Not the whole problem, but some points knocked off. So this is the amount of revenue earned. Remember, according to the revenue recognition principle, two things must be um, met, two criteria might must be met. We have to have realized or be able to realize an asset we have that asset, the asset was cash, they delivered us the cash, and then we have to have discharged some of our obligations to earn that asset. Well, in this case, we've only discharged three months of that. And we're gonna multiply that by 100,000. Well, 3 twelfths simplifies into one quarter. One quarter of $100,000 is $25,000. Therefore, we make the following entry at the end of December, the end of December 12, 31X0. We would record a debit to deferred revenue because now we're earning some of that obligation. We're discharging services and meeting the services we're supposed to provide um, in order to earn that revenue, 25. Okay. And we can also record some revenue. Now, what are the elements affected here? We have a reduction in liabilities because we're debiting a liability. We have an increase in our net income because we're recording revenue. And what type of uh, 
accrual, deferral, what type of adjustment is this? Well, did cash precede the revenue of recognition? It did. We received cash and we recognized the revenue from that cash at a, three months later in time. And so in this case, we have yet another deferral, 1F, 2Rs. Okay. Now, again, let's think briefly about any of the accounts that we have here. Um, we have deferred revenue and sales revenue. Well, the deferred revenue was already re recorded. Remember, this was one of our step one journal entries. We had $100,000 in our deferred revenue account already. So it was at zero. We credited it by 100,000. And now with our adjustment, we're bringing it down by 25,000. So we only have $75,000 remaining. Remain. With our sales revenue, we did record some sales revenue. Some sales revenue during so our sales revenue is already at 300,000. It didn't get there probably in one huge entry, but entry, but for the sake of, because we have no supporting evidence to say otherwise, um, we'll just go ahead and put it as if it all happened at once, $300,000 and we credited it by 25,000 and so now we have $325,000 of sales revenue, $75,000 of deferred revenue. These would be our new updated balances on the adjusted trial balance. Okay. So I'm going to stop the recording there and we'll pick up and do the remainder of those problems.